In this video, we are going to look at J.P. Uncut, a YouTuber who argues against Calvinism. As we listen, notice how J.P. has to wiggle around and add or change the texts to make his points. Also, keep in mind that J.P. calls himself the Calvinist killer. He teams up with open theists and other heretics to fight against Calvinism. These are the marks of a weak individual and he should be avoided. He does preach a different gospel. He teaches a works-based salvation and he also teaches that man can override God's will. So let's get started. Here is the text that JP is trying to explain. Take a second to read it, then listen to JP. It will be clear that JP is distorting the text to make it fit his views. Romans 8 verses 38 to 39, 38, For I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, listen carefully as J.P. says that only he can separate himself from God. J.P. says, any other, means any other thing except him. This is how J.P. wiggles out of giving God control. I think that the text is simply saying that nothing can separate us, no principality, nothing like that. But I don't see the text saying that we can't walk out in and, of, in and of ourselves. So if I decide to walk out, God is not going to force me to stay. That's not true love. True love is when there's a mutual agreement. I love you, you love me. But if you're reading that text as God is going to force you to stay, even if you want to leave, I disagree with that interpretation, sir. So um, are you saying that that you are not one of the anything else in all creation that cannot separate you from the love of God? Uh, certain translations say or any other thing. And I believe that any other thing is distinct from me. So because I'm something distinct from other, right, if something other, this phone is other than me. So any other thing would be everything other than myself. Ah! <laughs> I'm secured in Christ. I believe in security. I believe that in Christ I'm secure. I believe that 100%. But what I do not believe is that I cannot walk away and say, God, I don't want to do this anymore. You see, your God forces you to stay. Your God makes you stay. My God gives me a free choice to either stay or leave. That's the difference. Between so just to be clear, life. just to be clear, you're saying you can separate yourself from the love of God, correct? Uh, what I'm saying is that I, God has given me the option to stay or to leave because love is a mutual thing. Here, we are going to see JP teaming up with Warren McGrew. Warren teaches open theism. Open theism teaches that God does not know the future. Warren has claimed that the cross was a plan B. And JP is sharing a platform with him. This in itself is problematic. What does the Bible say about dealing with heretics? Romans tells us to mark them and avoid them, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Based upon the doctrine which we have been taught and which the Lord expects us to know, heretics are to be recognized. Well, this is what we're going to talk about. Propaganda. I'm going to talk about propaganda, but obviously before... We're going to talk about propaganda, but but the main topic at hand is original sin. But original sin kind of manifested through propaganda. Here we will hear JP deny the doctrine of original sin. This means everyone is born sin-free. Let's see what scripture says. Original sin, definition and scriptural support. Definition, original sin refers to the sinful state into which all humans are born, inheriting a fallen nature due to Adam's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. Key scriptures, Genesis 3 verses 6 to 7, ESV. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths, Romans 5 verse 12, ESV. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, Psalm 51 verse 5, ESV, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me, Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 3, 
ESV, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Like the rest of mankind, short defense, biblical basis, the doctrine of original sin is rooted in scripture. Romans 5 verses 12 to 21 highlights the connection between Adam's sin and its impact on humanity, showing the need for Christ's redemptive work, human nature, scripture consistently describes humans as inherently sinful, Psalm 51 verse 5, Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 3. This aligns with human experience and observation, theological necessity, original sin explains the universal need for redemption. It underscores human depravity and the necessity of a divine savior. And I say it's propaganda because, you see, we're all classified as Pelagiists and heretics because we deny original sin. None of us here believe that a one-month-year-old baby, a two-week-year-old baby, two-week-year-old? No, that doesn't make any sense. And anyways, a two, two, yeah, two-week, yeah, yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. A two-week and age baby just so there's no confusion. We don't believe that that baby is a sinner. We do not believe that they are a viper in a diaper. We don't believe any of this. You see, the Calvinists say that there's original sin. And they use original sin coined by Augustine. We know that it was all Augustine. And Augustine says that original sin is spread by the sperm. We know that, right? I saw one of Warren's videos and I looked up the quote. I couldn't believe it. Original sin is spread through sperm. And in order for anybody to come to Christ, you need to be touched by the Lord. This is the doctrine of total depravity. This is all a system that they have in place. And they push the narrative that this came from Pelagius or, 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 or the, the doctrine of, you know, Pelagius, Pelagian. They push that narrative. This is incorrect. The early church fathers believed and said a lot of things, they are not our final authority. The scripture is our authority. Quoting a church father to simply say that the early church had similar views does not mean we adhere to all of their teachings. It is only a historical reference. The non-Calvinists quote many church fathers, but we do not accuse them of holding to all of their beliefs. Equal scales should be used, J.P. is really showing his hand here on how dishonest he is willing to be and then he teams up with heretics to support his views. He has twisted scripture, sided with heretics, made false claims, and is full of pride. But let's keep listening. So this is all very disgusting. Very, very disgusting. You see, the narrative is, is that if you deny original sin, you're a heretic. Right? That's, that's the main thing. Oh, you're a heretic, you're a Pelagian. Ignatius believed this. The early church believed this. So I don't believe two-week-year-old babies are on their way to hell if they're not elect before the foundations of the world. Not a single passage in all of the Bible, not Romans and not Psalms, those are your only two. And if you want to take Ephesians out of context, that won't work either. But there's not a single passage in all of the Bible that speaks of original sin. There's not a single passage. Here are the key Bible verses supporting original sin. 1. Genesis 3 verses 6 to 7 ESV. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband. Adam and Eve's disobedience introduced sin into the world. 2. Romans 5 verse 12 ESV. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Sin and death entered the world through Adam and affect all humanity. 3. Psalm 51 verse 5, ESV, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. David acknowledges his sinful nature from conception, indicating that original sin affects all people. 4. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 3, ESV, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, 
carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. Humanity is described as fallen, born into sin, and by nature children of wrath. 5. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 22, ESV. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Just as Adam's sin brought death to all, Christ's resurrection brings life, showing the universal impact of Adam's sin. 6. Romans 5 verse 19, ESV, For as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Adam's disobedience made many sinners, underscoring the concept of original sin, these verses collectively support the doctrine of original sin by showing how sin entered the world through Adam and how it affects all humanity. To say that Jesus was not exactly like us, because we don't believe that we have original sin. But if you do believe that we do have original sin and Jesus didn't have original sin, then that means Jesus wasn't just like us. Therefore, he wasn't tempted in every way just like us. So that that destroys Jesus Christ, the original sin at its logical conclusion, not the real Jesus Christ, but it, it destroys this Calvinistic Jesus that didn't have original sin. But all of us do have original sin. Here, we see JP doesn't understand the two natures of Jesus. There is a term for this. The term used to describe Jesus' two natures is the hypostatic union. This should be a basic understanding for a person trying to teach about Jesus. Again, this just shows the ignorance of JP and the lack of basic understanding for proper biblical doctrine. Hypostatic union, definition. The hypostatic union is the theological doctrine that Jesus Christ has two natures, one fully divine and one fully human, united in one person. This doctrine was formally defined at the Council of Chalcedon in 451 AD. Key points, 1. Two natures, Jesus possesses both a divine nature and a human nature. These natures are distinct and not mixed together. 2. One person, despite having two natures, Jesus is one person. He is fully God and fully man simultaneously. 3. Biblical basis, John 1 verse 14, ESV, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth, Colossians 2 verse 9, ESV, for in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, Philippians 2 verses 6 to 7, ESV, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Summary the hypostatic union describes the union of Jesus' divine and human natures in one person. It is a fundamental doctrine of Christian theology, affirming that Jesus is both fully God and fully man, without confusion or division. I think we have sufficient evidence to show just how anti-biblical J.P. is. He loves to hear himself talk, but his vocabulary is lacking. He doesn't understand biblical truths and doctrines. He sides with heretics who support his position. He is unwilling to listen to truth. His heart is hardened. He is haughty and prideful. J.P. needs our prayers. He needs Jesus. His gospel is one of works where he is in charge. It is a dangerous gospel placing man above God. He needs to repent and ask for forgiveness. Comment below, what are your thoughts? And please, like, share, and subscribe.